The GPT Pocket is said to be the smallest laptop in the world, but is it any good and can you actually work with it? This is exactly what we looked at in a week-long real-life test. I'm Christopher for CMM, have fun watching. The GPT Pocket was provided to us by Gearbest. The link to the shop and further information can be found in the video description. The GPT Pocket comes in a black box with a magnetic lid containing a power supply, a Type-C cable, a Chinese quick start guide, a protective film for the screen and a Windows 10 license key. The GPT Pocket looks like a typical laptop but much smaller. The device is made entirely of aluminum which looks very high quality and reminds of a shrunk MacBook Pro. Due to the fact that the material thickness is very high, the GPT Pocket is extremely sturdy which reinforces the high quality impression. Rubber feet on the bottom ensure a secure stand. And the bottom cover can be taken off after removing the six screws. The opening at the bottom is used to suck in air for cooling. The fan outlet is located on the right hand side. Here you will also find all the GPD Pocket's connectors, a USB 3.0 port, a 3.5mm headphone jack, a micro HDMI output and a Type-C connector. At 18.2 by 10.9 by 1.8 cm, the GPD Pocket is really very compact and fits into large trouser pockets. However, the weight of 515 grams can be unpleasant. The inch leaves a good impression, it does not wobble and offers sufficient resistance. The GPD Pocket can be opened to an angle of up to 165 degrees. The keyboard is surprisingly good, here too the quality is absolutely convincing. The mechanics of the keys correspond to a large keyboard. The keys are very stable, do not get stuck and the stroke is comfortable and the haptic feedback is perfect. When typing, the keyboard does not bend at any point. The power button has a much stronger pressure resistance, so there is no risk of accidentally pressing it. The only disadvantage is the changed layout, but this was of course necessary to squeeze a full keyboard into such a small form factor without making the keys too small. As a result, you have to get used to the keyboard. This will take a few days with intensive use, but as soon as you got used to it, you can write on the keyboard surprisingly fast. To control the mouse, a track point is used, which corresponds to the track points previously used for IBM ThinkPads. The track point allows for a very precise control and the knob can be changed and is compatible with the replacement knobs of ThinkPad laptops. On Amazon there is a large selection of replacement knobs in different variants. Uh, the display inside the GPD Pocket is 7 inches in size and uses IPS OGS technology. Therefore, the LCD panel is laminated with the front glass. The resolution is 1920 by 1200 pixels and this achieves a high pixel density which provides a sharp image. The display is really good in terms of quality, the backlight is uniform, the black levels and contrast are convincing. Colors appear very natural and neither too intense nor too pale. The viewing angles are also very stable. A great weakness however is brightness. This is only sufficient for indoor use. If the sun is shining outside, you can hardly see anything on the display. The touch screen recognizes up to 5 touch points and convinces. The high resolution ensures a good accuracy and smooth scrolling. The reaction time is very good. The display glass is made of Gorilla Glass 3 and is quite robust. What is missing though is a coating against fingerprints. An Intel Atom X7 Z8750 processor with 4 cores powers the GPD Pocket. The clock rate can reach up to 2.56 GHz. The Intel HD Graphics 405 is used as the GPU. Together with 8GB LPDDR3 RAM, this package achieves a relatively good performance and the GPT Pocket performs surprisingly well in multitasking. Surfing the net with multiple tabs and using Microsoft Office and even simple Photoshop projects is not a problem. 
Windows 10 itself runs nicely too. Performance bottlenecks occur when playing games. Demanding PC games, of course, won't run, but even with simple Windows Store games like Asphalt Extreme or GT Racing 2, the GPT Pocket has its issues. In Asphalt Extreme, even on medium graphic settings, there is still some stutter. This could be due to the fact that the RAM is only clocked at 1066 MHz instead of 1600 MHz. You can't change this because the UEFI menu only offers basic settings. The advanced options have been disabled. The internal memory is relatively large with 128 GB and the eMMC memory comes from Samsung. The data rates are okay but not jaw dropping. Unfortunately, there is no possibility to upgrade the memory. There is no space for an SSD slot and a microSD card reader is missing, although it would have fit into the device. The USB 3 port can operate 2.5 inch hard disks without any additional power supply and reaches USB 3 data rates. The Type-C connector also achieves USB 3 data rates but does not provide enough power for hard disks. A video signal can also be output via the Type-C port but only with Full HD. 4K is only possible on the micro HDMI port. The simultaneous use of Type-C and micro HDMI connection is not possible because the distance between the ports is just too small. Unfortunately, there is a hardware design flaw that needs to be mentioned and that's when the GPD Pocket is charging while switched off, it heats up very much as the processor is activated for some reason. To avoid overheating, the fan is therefore forced to run at full speed. The noise itself is not really annoying because the fan only produces a blowing noise instead of a high pitched noise, but nevertheless the noise disturbs when you want to sleep for example. The GPT Pocket therefore should not be charged in the same room. The cooling system works surprisingly well by the way, we have not been able to trigger thermal throttling on our testing unit. The fan control is a bit aggressive though, at 50 degrees Celsius the fan already starts spinning, which is totally exaggerated. Starting at 70 degrees Celsius would be totally sufficient. The GPD Pocket is delivered with Windows 10 Home 64-bit. The English language was active out of the box and other languages can be installed from the settings. Alternatively, you can also use Ubuntu 16.04 LTS, for which there are official images on the GPD website. Under Windows, there is an error, which causes the GPD Pocket to take a long time to wake up from standby. Also, after this happened, the Wi-Fi module doesn't work anymore. This can be corrected by adjusting the registry and power settings. We have placed a link to some tutorial that explains how to fix this in the video description. The Wi-Fi of the GPD Pocket was a little disappointing. Although dual band AC Wi-Fi is supported here, the maximum throughput of just under 55 Mbps per second is quite low. The signal strength or range is in the midfield. Bluetooth hasn't caused any issues. The speaker in the GPD Pocket is hidden under the keyboard. It reaches a very high volume and sounds surprisingly good. Light basses get through, but scratching can be heard at the highest volume level, but 80% volume still is sufficient. The quality of the headphone jack is very good, the output is very loud and crystal clear. The quality of the internal microphone unfortunately is poor, the audio quality is just bad and the strong background noise makes it useless. The 7000 mAh battery in the GPD Pocket seems to be large, but the battery life is not quite as long as we expected. On average, it reaches around 4 to 6 hours of use time in normal use. Considering the small display, we have expected more here. Charging is done via the Type-C connector and power delivery. Charging from 20 to 100% takes about 3.5 hours. Conclusion One thing is clear. 
Kudos to GPD on what they managed to do here. There are not many small Chinese manufacturers who manage to realize such projects. Most of them simply buy from OEM manufacturers and then sell the devices as their own invention. But this thing is GPD's work from scratch. But the catch is that the GPD Pocket is really expensive, almost too expensive. About 480 bucks for a laptop with an Atomex 7 Z8750 processor really is a boomer. The price would have been more understandable if they would at least use a Celeron N3450 or even a Core M processor. We also find it a pity that despite the high price tag they have not been able to release a completely flawless product to the market. With respect to this, the GPT Pocket definitely is not recommended as a nice to have gadget. Only those who really have a use case for it should purchase this, anything else would be a waste of money. And that's all for this video, a shop link and more information is located down in the video description. I was Christopher for CMM, thanks for watching and see you in the next one.